We want to use Gauss's law to find the electrical field, or the strength of the electrical field in a distance s from an infinitely long straight wire. So this is a wire that is infinitely long in that and that direction. And we want to find the electrical field in a distance s from the wire. We'll do it by using Gauss's law and by applying a cylinder around this wire or around a piece of the wire. So here we have the cylinder with a length L that is capturing part of this wire. We will now consider the electrical field going out of this cylinder. If you stand here on point S with a positive charge, this wire will either repel you or attract you, but it will not pull you to any of the sides, because if you, if you stand here, then some of the wire over here will try to maybe repel you that way, but there's an infinite length of wire here and another infinite length of wire here, and they will repel you or attract you with equal magnitude. So when we want to find the electrical field that is perpetrating or that is going through this cylinder, we only need to consider the field that is going through this region here. We don't have to look at the sides. If we take this cylinder and we cut it up and we place this part of the cylinder, imagine a toilet roll and you cut it up, then you end up with a rectangle of length L and a thickness here of 2 pi S. So that's the uh, square, that's the uh, rectangle, the surface that we want to integrate over. If we look at the left hand side of Gauss's law, we see that we need to take the electrical field E vector dot dA. The dA is a vector that points well, that is perpendicular to the surface. So if you look at this surface, you have the A vector going here or here or radially outward. And if we cut it up to this rectangle, then the vector A is directly out of the blackboard, and so is the vector E. So this vector problem, this dot product, simplifies to a scalar product. So the left hand side of Gauss's law says integrate E over a surface A. But if you consider that whether you stand here or here or here or here or here, the electrical field all around this cylinder surface is constant. So integrating E with respect to A is the same as taking E and multiplying with 1 dA. And this integral just gives us the area of this surface. So we are left with E times the area A. So the left hand side simplifies to E times 2 pi S times the length L. If we look at the right hand side, we need to take 1 over epsilon 0 and multiplying with the charge that is enclosed on the, the charge inside of this cylinder. So we're left with 1 over epsilon 0 and then the charge enclosed. We see here that if we take a longer piece of wire then we just get the charge lambda times this length. Lambda times the length of the cylinder. The left hand side and the right hand side of Gauss's law then gives us E times 2 pi S L is 1 over epsilon 0 and then lambda, the linear charge density and then the length L. And we see that L cancels or the length doesn't matter in this regard. If we simplify this expression we get that the 
electrical field in a distance s is given by the linear charge density over 2 pi epsilon 0 and then 1 over the distance to the line. We are not used to this kind of expression. We see that the electrical field is 1 or it scales with 1 over length. We used to see maybe 1 over length squared. The point is that this charge density is a linear charge density, so it has the units of charge per length. So this is indeed the electrical field in a distance s of an infinitely long straight wire with a constant linear charge density.